How's it going guys? Welcome back to Fraud on the Telly. So recently I finally got around to reading all of the Critical Role comics. Yeah, if you didn't know, Critical Role has released a comic series over the last few years through Dark Horse Comic, touching on a number of stories and character stories that weren't fully addressed in the D&D show. Today, we're going to be reviewing The Mighty Nine Origins Yasha. In this video, we're gonna be talking about what I liked, what I didn't like, but most importantly, should you buy this comic? As always, if you enjoy the video, learn something new, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to ring that tiny bell so my videos go directly into your feed, and don't forget to check out some of our other Critical Role in D&D content. Let's get right into the video, shall we? So as I said at the beginning, finally, I've gotten around to reading all of the Critical Role comics, and definitely there are some that I like much more than others. Today we're going to be talking about the Mighty Nine Origins, Yasha, comic depicting the story of our favorite goth mommy, Yasha Nidoran, uh, and basically um, a part of her story mainly from her backstory. The story covers her early childhood through her time in her barbarian tribe, her introduction with Obon, and finally her breaking of Obon. Basically, it covers a good amount of her story up until she meets Molly Mock and the Fletchling Circus. Yasha's comic primarily focuses on fleshing out her relationship with Zuwala, her lover from uh, her barbarian tribe. The story follows Yasha as a young girl in her induction into this tribe unfortunately though it doesn't cover the events on yasha's life before this this is much of this is still left in a mystery to us we don't know anything about her real parents or her origins as an asimar the comic picks up basically where she is found by the sky spear the leader of the barbarian tribe and she is taken in as her daughter essentially the comic does well to highlight the relationship between Yasha and the Sky Spear, her adopted mother, basically, and how much of Yasha's flaws and kind of her pure rage kind of stem from this woman and ultimately what ends up happening to her and her lover. Now, I want to talk about the elephant in the room for me for this comic, the art style. I'm not going to lie, I almost feel bipolar with this art style there's some panels where the art looks freaking great the way the colors pop the use of kind of the pastels um just everything we'll put a few panels on screen of ones that i really liked this is frustrating though because while there are plenty of very colorful panels um that are just a joy to look at a lot of the other panels just aren't great personally I'm not the biggest fan of the way the artist uh, for this particular comic draws people. Obviously, this is just an artistic choice that the artist has gone for, but personally, I'm not the biggest fan, especially when you compare it to a lot of the other um, Critical Role comics or even some of the other um, Mighty Nine Origins comics. The other artists and the other art style just looks way better. I mean, just compare a lot of the panels from the Caleb uh, Origins uh, comic, and you're gonna see what I'm talking about. Just the way that faces and eyes are drawn in this, just it just feels so weird. I almost wanna say, to me, it feels kind of like a low quality job. It felt, it feels like, um, when I look at this, that's kind of the first impulse that I get. Sometimes I look at some of the panels and they just don't look uh, as high a quality as others. Now, I'm not trying to just show on the artist here. Personally, this is this is just my personal opinion. I just don't like this art style very much. And for me, it really detracts a lot from my enjoyment of this comic. You guys have seen our channel before. You know that I'm a longtime Critical Role fan and a pretty big Critical Role fan. I don't eat up everything they do, though. I'm quite critical for someone who is as big of a fan as I am. But that's because I hold these guys to a pretty high standard, especially when it comes to uh, the content that they put out. Now, I love Yasha. Her story is awesome, and it's fun to finally see Ashley Johnson get to flesh out a character fully, especially one as tragic and as badass, yet as wholesome as a character like Yasha. When it comes to the substance of the content, I'd say the comic is pretty good. Now, if you remember in the story of Critical Role, Yasha's tribe, uh, those who are in the tribe are selected uh, spouses, selected mates 
I guess. Of course, this creates kind of a star-crossed, doomed lovers scenario where Yasha and Zuwala, growing up as kids together and training, eventually as they become adults, slowly fall in love, eventually becoming married in secret. For whatever reason, they decide to go to their matriarch, revealing what they have done, ultimately leading in Zuwala's death and Yasha absolutely snapping, going full grog mode. As well, the pages depicting uh, Yasha and Oban's relationship, how they met, how Oban manipulates her, are pretty good as Oban is another intrinsical character in Yasha's story, especially within the story of the Mighty Nine in Critical Role, the D&D show. Overall, I'm really torn on this comic. The majority of the art, especially the drawing of people, I just don't like. It really takes away from what I think is the substance of the story, as ultimately these comics kind of serve for uh, fill in the gaps for much of the deeper lore and story that is Critical Role. They help flesh out more detail in certain characters or certain stories that we as the audience want to see. For many fans out there, though, these comics are just another Critical Role merch to add to their shelf. So I guess we should ask ourselves, would I recommend you buying this comic? I guess that depends. Now, as far as a financial investment, they're around $15, if I remember correctly, uh, for the paperback, the hardback cover to put on your shelf. That's a relatively pretty small uh, investment for just a piece of merch that you want to flex on people or just show how much you love Critical Role. How big of a critter are you? As far as a piece that's going to go on your wall or sit on a shelf, I'd say it's a pretty good buy. It's really not that much money and the cover for the art itself it's pretty great. It's not until you really crack it open that I start having some issues with it. As far as like new information and lore, we really didn't get that much from this comic. While it fleshes out a lot of the relationships that Yasha has with Zuwala, with Oban, with the Sky Spear, and you get to kind of see some of these events that we know very broad about in Yasha's backstory kind of get played out, there really wasn't a ton of new information, new lore that was added. It was more just lore that was already pre-existing and a little shallow that was kind of extrapolated and we went a little deeper on. So you're really not missing that much not reading this comic. Another question to ask yourself is, who is your favorite character from the Mighty Nine? If you're a massive Yasha fan, then yeah, you probably want to buy this as if this is your favorite character, why would you not want to buy um, probably one of the more interesting pieces of merch for them? Overall, though, when I compare it to the other comics of uh, that Critical Role has produced, to me, this one just kind of falls flat a little bit. Definitely ranks probably some of the lowest in terms of art style and art value, at least what I like in my art. I can't get over how absolutely weird that uh, people look in this comic, and it was immediately my first reaction upon opening it. Ultimately, I guess the style of art is just at the behest of the artist. It's the artist's choice. But for me, it's more than big enough uh, to make this not a buy personally. Now, if you're someone who wants to own the whole set of the Critical Role comics, I can see why you buy it. But to me, personally, when you stack it up to uh, a lot of the other ones, whether it's the Vox Machina Origins, Mighty Nine Origins, whatever you want to look at it. To me, this is one of the lower piece of works in the comic world that I think uh, Critical Role has put out. Artistically, it just didn't live up to the scuff for me. Um, Substance-wise, it was interesting, but it, I felt like I didn't learn really anything new after reading this. At the end of the day, I'm a big Critical Role fan and I'm a lore nut. I love the deep, complicated lore within Critical Role. It's probably the thing that keeps me coming back constantly is wanting to learn more about this crazy world and all of the crazy events that have happened. At the end of the day, this is just my opinion. And like we said, it's not that big of a financial investment. So if you're a massive Critical Role fan and you want to have the full set, feel free to buy it. And if you did enjoy it, please let me know in the comments down below. Maybe you guys can convince me that I'm being a little too harsh on this. Let me know what you guys think of the art style as well in the comments down below. I want to hear um, if I'm just crazy on this or if uh, you guys as well just aren't as big of a fan as the art. Like we said, when you compare some of these panels in um, <laughs> this Yasha comic to some of the panels in either the Bright Queen comic or the Caleb comic, you really take your pick. It really just falls flat for me. 
As always, guys, if you enjoyed the video, learned something new, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts on this comic and the other Critical Role comics in the comments down below. What is your favorite? Which one would you buy first? As always, guys, thank you so much for watching my video. Expect reviews for the other Critical Role comics, and I hope to see you in the next one. Stay safe out there. Peace, love, auto.